Hey everyone, ASAM Builds here, and today we'll be stepping back and looking at the LEGO Star Wars Battle Pack. From conception in 2007 till the current, these small sets have always been one of the most anticipated and desired from the community. For anyone that's new, the Battle Pack is typically a very small set, including about 100 pieces or so and 4 minifigures. The main purpose of these sets is to serve as a way to build your army and allow you to get a lot of minifigures for cheap. And when you think about it, that fits perfectly for something called Star Wars. However, along this lawn trail battle packs, Lego is not without their missteps. Well, let's see how they looked back at the beginning. And I mean the very beginning. These old minifigure packs released around 2000 can be the first hint towards the current day battle pack. There aren't a ton of similarities between them, but just the idea of selling a set where the main content is the minifigures was a new concept that we would eventually see develop into the current day battle pack. There were four of these released and once they stopped, we didn't see anything like it again till much later. This concept wouldn't resurface till around 2007. This was the year LEGO decided it was time to bring all the fun of full scale war to our living rooms with battle packs. These bad boys were packed full of clones, droids, and everything you needed to have a full epic battle right at home. Right away, LEGO hit a home run. These first two, I've got to say, are two of the best that LEGO has ever made. They both have a perfect minifigure lineup and consist of each faction's main troops, and a very solid variety at that. The clones have two plain, a shock, and a 327th trooper to finish it off. The droids have both B1 and B2 variations in this pack. The $10 price point was also just perfect. When you didn't have a lot of money as a kid but wanted a Lego set, these were easy enough to pick up even as a kid with no income. Shortly after those successes, it was followed with a Rebel Alliance and Stormtrooper battle pack. These did not disappoint. They followed their predecessors perfectly. Both are just as perfect as the clone and droid battle packs before them. With these four large successes, the battle pack quickly cemented themselves as a product here to stay. Not to mention they created a formula we would see follow for numerous years to come. The next to follow these classic sets was another home run hit, the Clone Walker Battle Pack. This pack is held in very similar cadence to the first four. Included was a bunch of Phase 1 troops with a gunner and a ton of accessories to differentiate the clones apart. This set came out right as the Clone Wars show was starting to air, and it was the perfect complement. The show was about large-scale battles of the Clone Wars, which served as the perfect motivator for people to go buy these packs and build their own army. The set in its timing was immaculate and brought in the current age for our clones ditching the old helmet designs. This pack combined with the Clone Wars show really brought around the whole idea of army building. Of course it was always present, but I'd say this really brought it to the forefront of people's minds and it's what really propelled the battle pack forward and kept it going through all these years. So with such an amazing and influential battle pack, what do you think its companion battle pack was? Absolute garbage. Now in reality, I actually understand why they chose the assassin droids and don't think it's the worst battle pack ever. They gave it a decent enough shot and I can see where the idea came from. The last droid battle pack they did was only a year ago and it had both B1s and B2 variations. So with very few options to oppose these clones, they decided to use the assassin droids and while it's not a great set, I can understand what was going on here at the time. We made our way all the way to 2009, which entered the third year for battle packs. And the theme for the sets was given to the Battle of Hoth. And what a great choice. Both these battle packs have a variety of troops from the battle, which can be seen as both a good and bad thing. The Rebels pack was a little more standard, but the Empire had three different minifigures in there. And this was the first time we started to see some non-soldiers in battle packs. Overall, not a bad grouping, but the at, -AT pilot wasn't really necessary. After these in 2011, we saw a return to the Clone Wars Battle Packs with the Clone Trooper and Mandalorian Battle Pack. We have got some cool figures here, but the clones weren't really large scale army builders, and I still think they have a place and can be considered a fine battle pack, but it was just a little different from what we were used to at the time. The Mandalorian pack was more traditional, proving for the same figure, and it was praised accordingly. Those sets really concluded the early years for the battle packs. After this, they got a little more weird. 
Lego got a little more experimental and they broke their formula from the past years. Typically, up to this point, two battle packs were released together that could oppose the other, and each was filled with four similar troops of the same faction. Why this went away, I'm not too sure. It made a lot of sense for these type of sets, but hey, new isn't always bad. Except when it is. In 2012 and 13, LEGO spiced things up by releasing Versus Battle Packs. They released four of them at the same time, and they weren't as bad as some people might make them out to be. The Indoor and Old Republic sets are both actually really great. The other two, however, aren't the best. The Cologne and Jordica Battle Pack, well... This set's just not good for army building whatsoever. Clearly a big misstep here, and one of the worst battle packs of all time. Probably the worst. The final versus pack is the Elite Clone Trooper and Droid Assassin set, which is seen by many as a great battle pack. I love this set too, but as a battle pack, it does lack the typical characteristics to make a great one. The clones are amazing in this set, and truly show LEGO at its peak. But they just aren't that good for army building, even though they're amazing. I know many think of the set fondly, and so do I, but at the end of the day, it doesn't have the fundamental characteristics to make a great battle pack. Luckily, we were on the verge of greatness, as in 2014, LEGO released two of the best battle packs we've ever seen. The Utapau and Kashyyyk Troopers battle pack both are top tier sets and give you everything you want from an army builder. After some wackier versus packs, it's nice to see a return to form. These two sets represent the core idea of a battle pack. All the best aspects, and it showed what an ideal battle pack should look like. And then alongside them, you also have this set. The Battle of Salukmai was actually fairly neat, and it fit well with the other two, being that they all are from Revenge of the Sith. But it's just a bit of a weirder battle pack. This set went on its own path, but in this case, it's not actually a bad thing. It's a fairly neat set, and offers a cool clone as well as some great droids to army build. It strays from the typical design of a battle pack, but in this case, it kind of works. Also from this year's the Death Star Troopers battle pack, and this one on the other hand just kind of is there. It feels a little unnecessary. Another thing I should mention about this year is that it did introduce stud shooters to our battle packs. This was obviously a very big blunder on LEGO's part, and thankfully it would be remedied eventually in the future. These would last a few years, only appearing in battle packs. It was an odd decision, and I don't know anyone who prefers these over the classic blasters. After that gem of the year, 2015 came around and followed with a similar format to its predecessor, in that you got three really good packs and one not so much. The Shadow Troopers may sound cool, but I just can't find the will to care about them. Luckily, the other three more than made up for it, the Senate Commandos and Geonosian Troopers packs, were both quite a neat treat. They weren't for everyone, but their specialized units were very good looking, and they gave you exactly what you wanted from a battle pack. I myself actually really love both of these sets. The figure selection was a perfect balance between niche and something you'd still want a few of. The last pack making its debut this year was the Imperial Troop Transport. This set had an absolutely perfect lineup of four plain stormtroopers, giving an easy way to grow your empire. My only issue with this set, however, is the Star Wars Rebel Stormtroopers. The helmets are a bit exaggerated for the art style, and I was just never a fan of it. I don't think many others were either, and that's why this battle pack is often forgotten about and not talked about as one of the best. Honestly, it was a very solid year, and I think it gets somewhat overlooked. Finally, we hit 2016, the start of every Star Wars fan's lifetime migraine. The sequels. Now, despite my feelings towards the movies, the battle packs along with its release weren't too bad. They also brought back the trend of releasing two battle packs to oppose each other. This was nice to see, even if it only lasted a few years. The other two that released this year just blew the sequel sets out of the water, though. The Battlefront packs are super underappreciated and some phenomenal army builders. The figures have some crazy detail, and as far as the game is concerned, it was represented to a T. The Imperial Shock Trooper is quite the standout figure, and the Alien Rebel Troopers are also a very welcome inclusion. Not to mention they were accurate to the game, and it was very neat to see these aliens at such a low price. Not a bad year, but the Battlefront packs were definitely doing the heavy lifting here. 
After a forgettable opening film, Disney actually did something right and made the amazing Rogue One. A whole wave of sets was made just for this film, and as you can imagine, a few battle packs snuck their way in there. This film's gritty style can be felt in the Rebel Troopers, and it's one of the best for that reason. Similarly, the Imperial pack has two Stormtroopers and two Death Troopers. The ratio probably would have been better with only one Death Trooper, but hey, it's still pretty darn good. The First Order Transport Speeder is another set we saw release here. And well, it's kind of neat to have some specialized troops, but again, sequels aren't really my cup of tea. Yeah, then the next one, this Bounty Hunters Battle Pack, didn't really make any sense. These are all really cool figures and awesome to get, but you can't army build these guys. A questionable move by LEGO, but somehow it's still better than what we see next year. In 2018, oh man, does it hit the fan this year. I mean, look at these. I'm not even going to talk about them in depth because they're not worth it. I mean, who's the genius that thought of these sets? Uh, yeah, let's give the people what they want. A way to build a Jawa army. Uh, no one wants that. All the battle packs from this year suffered from specialized figures that no one really cares about. Ultimately, this was a terrible year for battle packs, and the only good thing to come from it was that it quite literally could not get worse. After that train wreck, 2019 started on a similar note with the absolute stink bomb of the Praetorian Guard Battle Pack. Another set, I just wonder why. No one wants an army of these guys. There are only like six of them total in the movie. Luckily, after this, things start to get back on track with the Inferno Squad Battle Pack. Still not an ideal figure to army build, but a much better improvement from the previous. It was a neat set that kind of gets forgotten about. Finally, after way too long, we can see a good battle pack again, and it's actually a remake of the original Imperial dropship. There's nothing different here, just some updated figures and pieces. Still amazing and timeless. The only downside is they didn't remake the sister battle pack to go along with it. Not one of the worst years, but we are slowly getting back on track. I think the remake of the Imperial dropship showed them what kind of packs the community actually wanted. After this year, we saw a shift back to the more traditional pack, like in the beginning, which was good to see because things were rough for a while there. 2020 was finally returned to some kind of normalcy with our battle packs. Not perfect, but definitely a solid wave. The Sith Troopers battle pack did its job well, despite the terrible movie it was based on. After that, the Mandalorian battle pack showed up and was a really neat surprise. It wasn't for everyone, but overall, it was regarded very positively. Then, finally, we got a set that would change everything. For the past few years, there had been a big movement for a 501st battle pack. Now, if you don't know, the 501st was Anakin's personal lesion, and because of that, we saw a lot of them in the Clone Wars and other media, which caused them to have a very high popularity among the community. Many were very vocal about this cause, but I'd have to say the main leader was Ryan from m &R Productions. The dedication from him and other fans really just pressured LEGO to the point where they had no choice but to finally make this battle pack. This is easily the most important battle pack from the concept's conception in 2007. It recaptured the classic battle pack style and finally got rid of stud shooters after six long years. There was only one catch. It was $30. The only bad thing I can note about this battle pack is that it was increased to a price point of $30, which was a bit slimy of LEGO to do. They saw how popular it would be and reacted as a business would. This, however, did not impact the sales whatsoever. These things were selling left and right, flying off shelves. People would just casually go out and buy 10 of these bad boys. It's hard to say for sure as LEGO doesn't release any official numbers, but one can only imagine it's the best-selling set of all time. After this, we would see the battle pack line have a huge shift. I think the success caused LEGO to rethink a few things, and as such, we had a short hiatus from battle packs until their eventual return in a more traditional fashion. So in his following year, 2021, we saw this step back from battle packs, and the reason isn't 100% known, it's just up to our own speculation. But after the 501st battle pack success, we knew this line of sets wasn't going to go anywhere anytime soon. In this short drought, however, we received these minifigure packs, which were about as close as you could possibly get to a battle pack. We got two of these, and I have to say, they were absolutely amazing. 
The Hoth one in particular, I thought was just an absolute knockout with all the iconic accessories from that scene, as well as the amazing figures accompanying them. The clone one though was an absolute terror to try and find in stock. People would scalp this pack pretty hard and it was kind of aggravating for the longest time. People would scalp this set pretty hard and it was kind of aggravating for the normal consumer just trying to pick up a couple sets. The worst part about it is both these only lasted for one year, which only added to the stocking issue. The minifigure packs were honestly one of my favorite new things LEGO had done in a while. I think they are a great alternative to battle packs and a good set at a low cost, which is something we definitely need more of. After that short break, 2022 saw the return of battle packs. Well, sort of. Only one pack was released that year, and that was the Snowtrooper Battle Pack, a set that's wildly underrated. This was the set to bring battle packs up to $20, and because of that, some have viewed this set poorly since day one, and kind of just held that against it. If you look at it though, the builds are phenomenal. Combined with a perfect lineup, and this battle pack reminds me of the originals and how these sets should look. It was extremely well done and it made us very hopeful for the future battle packs. Our excitement was not met with disappointment, as in 2023, we saw a slight upgrade with two battle packs being released, and LEGO further trying to capitalize on the success of the 501st Clone Legion Trooper set. Both these packs were based on variations of the 501st clones, and they're both very solid, but it was clear what LEGO is trying to do here. I like both the sets, but I will admit it does kind of feel like LEGO is just trying to cash in on all the 501st hype. One other thing I should mention is this is the year that added helmet holes to our Phase 2 clones. Now I won't swing far into that mess, but it does need to be mentioned because it is a huge point of tension in the LEGO Stars community. Finally, we are caught up to the present 2024, where we have two battle packs so far. The first one was the Clones vs. Droids battle pack, at a $30 price point like the 501st Clones, but here you actually get your money's worth. It's somewhat of a loose interpretation of a remake for the first two battle packs. That being said, if it weren't for the helmet holes, I could easily plant this as a perfect set. The value is so good here and the character lineup and accessories for each side is absolutely sublime. A terrific set that makes me more excited for the future battle packs. This new combo battle pack they did here is something that can hopefully be continued. I love the play this brings with it as well as all the figures you can build and army collect at the same time. The other battle pack from this year is also a versus pack but it's in the smaller scale form. It's a $20 set in this smaller versus style, and they did it right though. This new Mandalorian battle pack is very nice, both the figures and the build, and we might have just found ourselves in a new golden age of battle packs. This, combined with the great battle packs of the past few years, has me very hopeful that LEGO has finally figured this series out. Now that brings us to the present, where things look very bright. I think LEGO has finally figured it out and quality battle packs have been a pattern in these last few years, so hopefully this can continue for a long time to come. I love battle packs not just for the army building, but also as just a fun cheap set. With how big LEGO sets are now, it's nice to be able to go to a store and pick up a small little set just for a few bucks. Battle packs definitely have their place solidified in LEGO Star Wars history, and they are not going anywhere. And I'm very excited to see where this line of sets continues to bring us in the future. Hey guys, if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you. This was a bigger project, but it was something I knew I wanted to do. I don't see many people talk about the history and evolution of LEGO Star Wars, or at least that in depth. So between that and my love for battle packs, I went ahead and made this video. This was my first longer form of content, and I'm not so sure how this video will be received. So if it's something you want more of and enjoyed, please make sure to let me know that in the comments and with the like button. I would love to continue this deep dive type of video and look more into topics, but I'll need some support from you guys if that's the case. Anyway, again, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.